It is 6.30 on August 8th. I will call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum present. Do we have any um, anyone signed up to speak for the public forum? No, ma'am. Okay. Item C on our regular agenda. <clears throat> this will be to discuss and review the year-to-date financial statements for July of 2022. Did anyone have any questions? I don't think there was anything terribly out of the ordinary this month. <clears throat> All right, any questions on that on the uh, financial statements? Yes, no. All right, number two, <clears throat> discuss, consider possible action on the meeting minutes from April 11th of 2022 and July 11th of 2022. Uh, let's start with uh, April 11th. Were there any questions or concerns? Any for the July 11 minutes? All right, do we have a motion to approve those? Approved. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Alice, I assume you were able to capture. <laughs> yes, Waldrop made the motion to approve the minutes and Henderson um, seconded. What is okay. name? All in favor. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Four to zero. <clears throat> Number three, discuss, consider possible action on the fiscal year 2022-23 budget. Mr. Peacock. All right before you is the draft of the uh, budget for this year. Not a whole lot of changes from last year. We are projecting um, an increase of uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in sales tax. Those numbers are growing strong. We're already we've already exceeded the five hundred thousand we budgeted for this month, uh, or for this year, uh, with a couple of months left to go. Um, it's a little bit above where I ran the projections, but it, it's a good target to hit. And with some of the new stuff that we have opening up. I think we're going to get there without any problem at all. Expenditures, uh, of course, there's payments and interest for the revenue bonds. Uh, we've allocated some funding for capital outlay for Joshua Station development. That's mainly just maintaining um, the what's out there along with the utilities. Uh, those numbers did not change much from last year. In the development part, we've got some uh, 380 agreement expenses in Joshua Station. We have the $100,000 facade grant funding uh, set aside by the um, Affordable Care Act funds that the county, uh, I'm sorry, that the city allocated. Uh, and then we have put back <clears throat> just for future and in case, I expect at some point we're going to see the Chamber of Commerce come back and ask to reinstate their annual funding. Uh, the city council did award them $62,500 this year for startup funds to get them back up and operational. That was done through Affordable Care Act funds as well. They qualified as a 501c3 nonprofit and they more than uh, provided revenue losses because they were virtually shut down for a couple of years with COVID. Uh, but we did previously pay them an annual amount of $18,000. We stopped that about eight months ago uh, just because they weren't doing anything and there just didn't really seem to be uh, a reason to pay it. So they, they requested that we stop that. And then we've got um, 
some advertising and promotional money there uh, that we're going to be finishing our push in Joshua Station. And every time Molly comes to my office, she wants money. So I've got a, I got an account for that. Uh, administrative stuff, The uh, there's uh, 7,000 for training and travel. You know, that may be the ICSC program. There could be a number of things that, uh, that we haven't gone to ICSC lately uh, to set up the booth and all that. We've had just about as good luck as just going on the day, the deal making stuff and meeting with uh, the developers for this area. So that in previous times, we went and set up a booth and went through this whole thing and we weren't really getting much of a return. So we've kind of cut that back a little bit. Uh, and then you've got, of course, the administrative stuff includes the salaries that come out for Molly and uh, some additional staff time. Transfers that are automatically done for uh, mainly debt service payment. We're projecting that your revenues will exceed expenditures by $239,995. Um, we just couldn't find a place to spend it. So we just put it in the bank, I guess. So your, your revenues over, uh, that's going to leave you with a even healthier fund balance. Uh, and hopefully by, actually, I think by the end of this year, you're going to be close to a million dollars in fund balance. And I would just add to that. This budget um, certainly is subject to change as development happens. Molly's got a lot of things in the works, some of which you're going to get some updates on tonight. This is a very easy budget to amend. And so uh, while we've been waiting on prices and wait for some of these deals to kind of fall into place, those are not reflected here but they could be at some point. And so uh, I don't expect a whole lot of changes tonight unless you guys have some recommendations. And the way this works is you guys approve your budget, which you can either do tonight or you can ask for some changes, questions, and we can come back and do it again. And then once you approve it, the council will approve it um, with the annual city budget um, on or before September 30th of this year. I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Molly's going to spend all of it, what you're telling me. She will try. She, uh, I don't know who taught her to ask for six <laughs> figures, but she's got it down right. And with pretty good ideas too. So I wish we had more. She could, she's got some good things in the works. Um, I'm, I'm very um, pleased with the stuff that she's been doing since we brought her over. She was, their losses, our gains kind of way I look at it. She's been very busy. I do have one question. Um, yeah. On the, um, you were talking about the funding for the Chamber of Commerce. You mentioned that they may be asking for that. Um, is that something that we're going to, um, I mean, is that something that we're not planning on? Um, <clears throat> I mean, are we waiting for them to ask or is it something that we're proactively going to them that we've now budgeted this and it's available to them? Um, we, we have not approached them about taking it. It has been brought up in some conversation. I expect that they, uh, they did ask what the process would be. I told them that it was simply a written request to the board. They would come before the board, have a conversation with you and explain what the money would be used for. Okay. The last time we did it, the money, it was initially $12,000 and it was to pay for a part-time office assistant so that somebody could be in the office most of the time if somebody came in. Um, it stayed at 12,000 for about five years. And then uh, Kim Henderson, when she was president of the chamber, asked that it would be increased. And so it went up to this 18 number. And that's where it's been for the last several years. And it was paid out quarterly. Uh, and, and it was really, it was not restricted. We didn't tell them what they could or couldn't do with it. Um, they, they have a new president now. I don't know if any of y'all have met her. Um, Mary uh, Marino, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, very energetic, kind of like this one, has lots of plans. 
lots of ideas. She's really hit the ground running. She's bringing memberships back. Um, they're, they've got an office now set up across the street in this new building, wherever it is over here. Um, so they're, she's accessible to us and, and people to come in. And they've, we've done several things. Uh, the mayor has, has, is scheduling coffee with the mayor meetings. They showed up at that at Mariposa. Um, almost the entire board, they showed up and helped us with that. They're, they've got a school back or school supply program that Alice is involved with with them. Uh, she is, you're on their board, right? No. No, you're just a, uh, you're but, in so between. I, huh? I don't know. Didn't they have a name for it? Yes, they do. The liaison. That's it. She's on <laughs> something. That's it. Um, ambassador or something like yeah. that i think what they call them yeah so uh you know she's <clears throat> very on some other things and so she is um she's been very aggressive and i uh, i expect that some point they will come so i just went ahead and plug okay you're being i'm sorry you're being well if i'm going to change the budget i want to change it for something really good eighteen thousand dollars with this one sitting beside me uh that's just a drop in the bucket you know i think it is from us because they there's another round of the affordable care act money coming out uh i expect we'll get that second million dollars a little over that we got the last in august uh, we're thinking that that's when this will show up again we haven't used all of the first allotment of money and so because they're a nonprofit, because they suffered loss and all that, they 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 could be funded through that, uh, as opposed to this. And so, uh, if if we do that again with them, it may be that um, that we funnel that through here. This board being kind of the oversight for the city, um, and I, we're going to ask her to come to these meetings quarterly just to fill you all in. Uh, to kind of justify the money they've got, the money that they may need in the future so that they, we had them doing that before. And uh, so Mary, she will um, very quickly explain to you the things going on. She's, she's very passionate about that chamber. She's, I hope it stays with her. She's, cause they're, they're very important to us growing and they're a, they're a big cheerleader for the city when they're up and running. Do you? Yeah. How come? Are you on one? No, I'm not. I I just had different dealings here and there with them in the past. They they can be a big help. They're always a big cheerleader for the city. So we wanted them up and running. We were pushing them to get up and running, um, even to the point that uh, when the mayor and I met with them, we told them that we were prepared to fund another startup if they didn't get with it. And they brought her on and they they've done she's done very well. Are there any other questions on the budget? All right, do we have a motion to accept or any amendments needed? Okay. Do, do we have a second? Oh, yeah. I second. All right, so we have a motion and a second to accept the proposed 2022-23 budget. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, so four to zero. Uh, item number four, discuss, consider, and possible action on the policy for the facade improvement plan. So you have a draft um, in front of you with a couple of changes that, uh, the council requested and then some I think uh, that Shelly brought up at the last meeting and so we have taken out the $50 application fee we have changed the language and uh, made it allowable for uh, businesses to apply that uh, made changes to their facade and improvements within the last 12 months you'll be able to consider those uh, for funding those were the two big um, things that 
that people brought up was they wanted to be able to go back and offer maybe some people that started out that didn't. This is another thing that the chamber has agreed to cheerlead for us to advertise and to help uh, get the word out about this. And so we're, they're going to be a big help um, in this program here. Now, we we also put in, we haven't really been able to establish what the maximum amount should be. So we just put, we've got it limited at $5,000, but we have a caveat that approval can be processed for a request that exceeds that $5,000 based on available funding. So if they came in and were asking for more, maybe had done, just example, the nursery guy over here, I mean, he spent a ton of money getting that thing up and running and ready. That might be something that you wanted to consider more for. So you have the option to go more uh, the basic grant is still setting at five and I mean we can I don't care what the number is but I just figured that ten thousand um, dollars yeah, I'd like to be able to do more than ten of them uh, but you, we can set that number whatever you got you guys want the council wanted to take a look at that being a little bit higher um, they brought that up and so I, I made that we just put that caveat in there that <clears throat> at your discretion it can go above that limit so this is the this is just another draft that will go this will go to the council also um, you guys are seeing it first and if you're good with it then uh, we'll move forward to the council will get it next thursday night and see what changes they have and, and if you have changes we can put those in now before the council gets it I'm sorry. How high would they like to see the number? Well, they didn't really say. They just wanted the option to go above that. I don't think there was a number ever given. Uh, and I and I'm not sure that we have to list one if we're if we're willing to look at circumstances to go above that. Um, you know, if it's something that was a complete redo like what was done over there, it, it might be something y'all want to look at. So uh, you, you have that ability. <coughs> Probably going higher if you limit how many you're going to do. Yes, sir. That that was my concern about ten thousand initially because if you know if you get some, it doesn't it doesn't take much to spend ten thousand dollars anymore nowadays. Um, so that was kind of what we looked at after talking, and I called a few other cities that have these, and a lot of the cities our size that they're doing these similar projects with this federal funding. They start at five thousand, but they they also allow people to go higher if need be. So, do we need to have any documented process as far as what it would look like for us to make that special approval? The application process would be the same. Um, I think, as it reads now, it's just on a case by case. Um, I have not put any, um, I guess, specific thing. One of the things I thought about that we could do is that if, if they're going to exceed the $5,000, then that's something that should be pre-approved before the construction. Now, that's going to that's gonna affect people that have already built. Um, and I guess, I mean, I... That was the only real caveat that that I considered that um, that them coming to the board prior to, so you would have knowledge of it ahead of time what's been spent. But there were several people on this board and the council that that wanted us to allow people to go back as as much as twelve months, uh, and, and there may be a few that. that <clears throat> So I don't know if, if you any of you guys have a recommendation as to should there be another step for those. I'm happy to plug it in. Um, I just couldn't really think of any that made uh, that made really made a difference. The application is you've got quite a bit of information on it, so I, I'm not sure that there's anything else we can ask for. Well, I didn't necessarily mean as far as for them to provide it. Is it anything that the board needs to document what our procedure is so that there's not any confusion if we were to approve it for 
one circumstance versus another? Do we need to have some sort of policy in place on our side on how we're making that decision? We, we have, I think currently we have um, uh, the items that listed that are eligible projects. Okay. Um, so I guess it really just, it simply comes down to, is it something that we could come back after the fact if we get several up at the beginning and then we don't have any more for a period of time and we go along and we end up having funds, could we go back and, you know, if there was somebody early on that had a larger amount, come back after the fact and. Um, I think you can, um, and I think that would be easy to include uh, in the, uh, just kind of back in the, the body of the program, we could, uh, we could plug something in that, that allowed, uh, board approval to, to reconsider additional funding. If, if you're talking about if funds remain available, if say funds you, remain available. Yeah. I think we could plug, plug that in, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, where are you? Oh. I guess Under C, yeah. Yeah, part C. yeah, we can add some language. So, um, my question is again for renewal now. The process in district C5000, so if they put the application in, they get the 5000 motion first, and then anything that breaks the 5000 threshold. Required process, process. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it'd be like a two step process? Well, so that, like, if you apply for like 8,500 bonds, you know, just 500, 5,000 automatically, and then special approval on the 3,500 remainder. No, I, I think the intent of this was that you could consider the 8,500 at, at that time. Is there going to be a limit if, like, this nursery guy walks in and said, I spent a hundred thousand? I think there has to be a limit. Great. Um, I think we're just going to have to decide what that is. Uh, and this is something that's a moving target. We can amend this thing anytime if, you know, if we determine that it's, it's not enough or too much or whatever. But I, I mean, I, I think they're, I, I do think that we that it needs to be capped at at some number. I, I would recommend a percentage of the budget, right? So that way, if the budget increases or decreases, the percentage on that is less. So, like a percentage of the hundred thousand dollars. So, if we have a hundred thousand dollars on our budget, you know, fifteen thousand or fifteen percent would be fifteen thousand dollars. Budget, you know, oh, okay. I get what you're saying. That way, that could work. Two hundred thousand under special occasions, somebody could potentially get thirty thousand dollars for the budget. Yeah, I see where you're at. And then you're five percent instead of you know, five thousand. Will the city funds to? Well, we have it now. Um, and we have that money through 2020, well, the new round will be 2025, I believe. So it can be funded for a few years. And then once those federal funds are gone, you would have the option that the council could set aside money to fund part of it. This board could fund it out of their funds if they wanted to. Um, you can add to the 100,000 if you want to. I mean, it's really, you guys are setting the rules. The council appropriated 100 grand. If you wanna to add to it, you can. If we run through this and you want to add another hundred grand to it, you, we can amend your budget. Do that. We can approach the council for it. And I, th I think they want to spend it. They want to see the improvements. Makes the city look better. Uh, just goes along with some of the things that, that they're already doing. Is it something that we should consider doing with the committee? Will develop guidelines or objectives? Should we approve that? Yes. 
the guidelines and objectives, yeah, they'll be coming right along behind us. So are the microphones for the directors on? I can hear Mike and Alice, but I can't really hear anybody else. Turn your, if you would turn your mic towards you and get, yeah, move it closer if you want, because you gotta be pretty close to it. No, you don't need to push. It should be red. Yeah, if you just, yours too, Angela. <laughs> Can you hear her, Shelly? Not very much, not very much, but put it right up to you. Sorry. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Sorry. My, my question was just about if you were going to approve the guidelines that the committee creates. And Mike said that that will come to us and we'll approve that. Mm -hmm. And so are y'all all in agreement that is the 15% the number that you want to not to exceed the budget? Is that, does that, y'all feel comfortable with that? I think so. Or a different number, Johnny? <clears throat> so do we need to approve this or are we just giving you direction for the final mock-up to present to the council um i don't think you need to approve it uh, tonight we'll get these changes made um and hopefully by the next time we meet i'll have uh, the guidelines and stuff set up in place and we'll be able to look at it all <clears throat> and we'll get these changes in and that'll give us time to see if the council wants to, if they have any other suggestions also. So we can bring it back to you. I'll get, what is this, August 7th? Yeah. yeah, you'll have another meeting before the budget. Okay. All right, anything else on this item? I have a question. Okay. Has anybody applied for this? No, we haven't advertised it yet. Once we get it in place, we'll. Well, now, now it could. I mean, there could be some people. Nobody has called and asked me about it. Uh, they might be speaking with the chamber about it, but not, nothing has gotten back to me as far as I know. Okay, good. I will get these things in and. Okay. Um. <laughs> There's nothing else on that item. Then at 6.58, we will adjourn the regular meeting and proceed into executive session regarding, um, oh, it's on the next page. Pursuant to section 551.072, Texas government code to discuss or deliberate the purchase, of purchase exchange lease or value of real property. <laughs> okay, Shelly, whenever you're ready. All right, it is 728. We will reconvene to regular session. Is there a motion at this time? May I make? Uh, yeah. yeah um, a motion to authorize staff to move forward with negotiations on property discussed in executive session. Okay. And do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All right, four to zero, the motion has passed. Um, item number F, any future agenda items to be considered for the next agenda? Do we have anything? All right. If not, then at 7.29 p.m. we will adjourn. Thank you. Thanks, Shelly. Thank you. Yep.